Hi, I'm Carl. At work, at Greenpeace, I was known as Mondo. This is a name that I use now, a name that was given to me when I was studying Zen Buddhism in South Korea. I lost my job recently because of accusations basically claiming that I'm a sexist. I have been a human rights activist on and off and quite seriously since I was about 18 or 19 years old. I began this career with Amnesty International as an urgent action letter writer before the internet. I have always championed the causes of equality, justice, freedom, and individualism. I've written essays and poetry about it. I've made artwork about it. And anybody who has taken the time to get to know me, thank you, knows this to be an ironclad truth. As a writer and an artist, I arrogate, as my good friend Robert M. Diefendorf would say, I take the liberty of speaking my mind, um, usually as carefully and articulately as I can, to express my feelings about human and other species and other natural se sexual persuasions rights. I have never been, nor could I ever be, an ethnophobe. I don't use the word race. It's a misnomer, a leftover, erroneous term from Victorian science. I don't even use the word animal when I remember not to. I use the word or words other species. So these claims against me were ridiculous. And the results, my losing my job, completely unjust. And I'll give you the details here. I was on a volunteer and work trip to Boston, and I had to share a room with a young man named Stephen Buckley, who has done a lot of volunteer activity for Greenpeace, but who is, in no uncertain terms, a very young man, immature, overzealous, like a few others at Greenpeace New York. And he misheard some things I said after... Uh, an argument or discussion that I had in the hall with my then girlfriend from Cambodia. I was lying on the couch because I gave him the king size bed out of kindness and I was frustrated and I said into the ether, I should stop getting involved with women who are not my moral and intellectual uh, match or I should stop getting involved or I have to stop getting involved with women who are not at my moral or intellectual level. I may have said with women who are not my, with women who are my intellectual and moral inferior. Now, I'm sorry, I care, but I can't put too much weight in you being offended by that, anyone, because it has a certain linguistic meaning that is not sexist. But he took it as sexist. It basically meant I have to meet women who are at my level. Whether my level's low or high is not the point. It's that I tend to get involved with people who need development in the moral and intellectual area, either because of personal issues of development in their lives or cultural differences. Now, these things do exist. Whether or not you want to be PC about them, they exist. I'll give you an example where you will see that it's okay to say that people are not at your level. I will take credit away from myself. I am a vegetarian, but I'm not a vegan. Vegans are at a higher moral level than I am, in my opinion. And if you listen to the details, you'll see why. I am a vegetarian not only for health reasons and environmental reasons, but because... The way things are today, the majority of the food that we can acquire is not organic and it's not free range. And so animal products come with a great deal of pain meted out against other species. By being a vegetarian, I'm not playing into that cruelty. However, I'm not a complete vegetarian. I'm not a vegan. I'm a lacto-ovo vegetarian. And I can't always buy free range and organic food. So sometimes the eggs, cheese, and milk that I consume 
probably has come from factory farms in which animals have suffered, even though they haven't been killed. That puts me at a lower, a lower moral level than vegans. I can readily admit that without having a major identity crisis. To me, it's about being a man. Now, my coworkers would get upset. They would want me to say a human being. I'm not allowed to say I'm a man. And now I'll get back to the charges against me. I'm not allowed to say I'm a man. The proof of which was in my not being allowed to wear a shirt that I made, which said, face the climate like a man. I was not allowed to wear it because some overzealous people thought that it would be misinterpreted as sexist. I've been alive 48 years. I've had friends from every gender group, every part of the world. And I know that the majority of the intelligent and spiritually advanced ones among my friends wouldn't have taken offense at that. But okay, Greenpeace wants to make sure it doesn't offend anybody, so I couldn't wear the shirt. Now let me just say that that was one of the charges against me, that I made a shirt that was offensive. This is what HR told me, along with telling me that I had said that women are morally and intellectually inferior. But I didn't say that. I'll come back to the shirt later and why there's nothing wrong with what I said on the shirt. Hold your judgment on that if you can. The next thing I was charged with was having said that I wanted to get involved with a married woman, a co-worker. <laughs> this is me, Carl Attenisi, the love counselor. I would never get involved with a married woman. Now, that charge came from the following statement. Oh, I should date somebody like Jess. If she weren't married, maybe I'd ask her for a date. And the response from Stephen Buckley was, Mondo, that's inappropriate. She's a married woman. How sophomoric can you get? How unsophisticated? How unadult? How inobservant can you be? This is me talking. But of course, the people who are prone to injuring others don't really find out who those people are because then they wouldn't want to injure them if they had an ounce of decency. I'm not suggesting that Stephen Buckley doesn't have an ounce of decency, but his decency is overladen with youthful green zealotry and immaturity to the effect that it isn't there. Jess, the person I made the reference to, is someone I would never date. As wonderful as she is, we have a professional platonic relationship, or we did. That's been taken away because I'm not allowed to work at Greenpeace anymore. I wouldn't date her, not because she isn't a wonderful person, but because I have developed a constitution in and of myself, which makes it so that if I don't fall in love with somebody otherwise, I've decided that I will marry and date only Buddhists, atheists, and agnostics. I've never been religiously intolerant before, but the other religions are intolerant, and so I can't again, as I have before, mix myself with those people or the families of those people. It's usually the families of the people that you're in love with, which cause the problem. The, the person who loves you, of course, creates a culture of love with you, so sees past the religious or political or ethnic barriers. It's always family and friends who get in the way, and I had this happened in Korea, and I'll never let it happen again. That's why my relationship while I was talking to Buckley was with a Buddhist in South Korea. I only mentioned Jess to chide myself, to say that I've got to maybe be with somebody who is culturally congruent with me. Now, even if I had said what I said with no nuanced inflections or intentions, he shouldn't have taken this to my superior, Yellow Goller, another person who has made waves at Greenpeace. I know from talking to people at Washington, D.C. office, and I know from people that I worked with who are good people that she's hard to be with because like Buckley and like another one named Shelby, all good people at heart, but quite maligned in their behavior, overzealous and feminist and fascist in their wanting to control other people and collude with the powers that be, like H.R., and the leadership at Greenpeace over having a conversation with someone like me. The wrong guy to be hurting, as my friend Adam Hoffman, the professor of political science, would say. This is a problem with the left. This tearing at your own ranks for political correctness. 
That's not righteousness. That's not goodness. That's not love from where all left-wing politics come. That's control. And control comes from wounded and injured personages and personalities. So here they are enumerated. I was accused of being a sexist for saying that all women are inferior intellectually and morally. I didn't say that. I was accused of wanting to go after another woman. I would never do that. I didn't say that. I made a hyperbolic, fallacious, facetious, and hypothetical comment that I should date someone like this girl Jess. Even had I said, I wish I could date Jess, but she's married. There's nothing wrong with that to an adult. But Buckley, who's on blood pressure medicine and spent half the time in the room pacing around nervous, talking about how difficult his day was as he sat in coffee shops and tweeted on Greenwire while we were out canvassing or preparing to infiltrate the seafood convention, was nervous. Why? He's got issues. Back to the shirt. The reason I wrote on the shirt, face the climate like a man, is I'm a man. And although I could extend my human experience to trying to understand women and thus choose a politically correct phrase like face the climate like an adult, I don't really have a real artistic or moral right to speak from a position that encompasses women because I'm a man. And you're probably thinking, Mondo, you think too much. That's the job of an intellectual That's what I'm aspiring to be, a person who carries himself and thinks in terms of intellectual thought. That's what it means to be thoughtful, to be in your intellect and using it. It's also spiritually pure to only speak from the position and the experience that you have. Yes, I do sometimes speak of myself as a human being, and I try to extend that understanding to other human beings. That's how we love. But the shirt was going beyond that. I wanted to inject my words into the vernacular in the English language and probably in many others. Be a man or face it like a man has a felty, experiential, powerful meaning that it would be stripped of, that the phrase would be stripped of had I said face the climate like an adult. You have to put flowers around that. I'm trying to talk with strength to men and not heterosexual men, which is what the implication was as the perception of the people who didn't understand the shirt. Oh, you're only talking to heterosexual men. You're only talking to macho men. No, I'm not only talking to macho men, but yes, I was targeting that group who thinks of themselves as macho men because they are the ones in control of our political, gender, and environmental paradigm. Of course it makes sense to talk to cowboys by calling them cowboys. If you call a cowboy a lovely human being, he's not going to hear your message. Hello? Get an art education. Get an education in dialectics. Get an education in deep thinking. I didn't finish college, but I'm educated because I choose to be. I think and I feel. I meditate to bring those two paradigms together. And I read and I talk to people and I love everyone so there isn't anyone I can't make friends with everywhere I go around the world. So I had a right to make a shirt that said face the climate like a man. It was meant for the men who are acting like boys. Whether they are gay, straight, transgender, or bisexual. They're men. You can't deny a man his physical corpus just because he has a persuasion that goes one way or another. I was talking to men. If George Carlin can get up and say that the world is the way it is because of men and people don't call him a sexist, then I have a right to say that. But you see, the people that I work with at Greenpeace are that simple. Some of them, about four of them, not most of them. Four of them are only interested in titles and restrictions and labels, the things they think they're fighting against. But that's what a feminist does. Someone who believes in equality for men and women won't call him or herself a feminist. I did it once when I was hanging out with a very intelligent friend of mine who got me to read about feminism, many of the principles of which I'm down with, dude. But I've come in my sophisticated older years to realize that 
Feminism is a poor title for a group of people who want equality between the sexes. It would be like my joining a group called manism. There's no way that would be sat with. There's no way that would be accepted. There's no way that that would be tolerated. But a group of women who claim to be for the rights of women can call themselves feminists. Now, I get it. I understand the linguistic nuances, but it doesn't work anymore because feminists have offended too many men. And I lost my job because of a feminist agenda. And the people that were behind it can be damn sure that HR did this out of efficiency. There are four of them and one of me. And there's one other guy who lost his job. You know what he lost his job for? In a hugging culture such as New York Greenpeace is, he asked our supervisor, Yellow Goller, not actually his supervisor, his equal. He's a team leader, she's a team leader. But he asked her on a hard day in Boston where canvassing wasn't going well and it was raining and cold, would you like a hug? That was one of the charges against him. One human being saying to another human being, a heterosexual male who is not interested in the team leader that he spoke to on a sexual level, but as a human, would you like a hug? That was an offense. Another charge? He said, women take too long when they shop. Okay, something that comes close to sort of becoming a pale statement in absolutely PC community discourse, but not really something that would be incongruous with gentleman discussion. And you have to look at the person who's saying something. This guy worked for Children's International. He's a peace-loving person who brings positivity, love, and professionalism everywhere he goes. We were sitting in a van on an extended trip where we were cooped up with one another for a week. And he said this, off the cuff. That was cause for him losing his job. Women have told me they take too long shopping. Hey, all of you feminists in Greenpeace, get a passport. Go to Asia. You will be up against a mountain, a tsunami of women who will make generalizations about their sex that you will not have one iota of power to fight against. Because you will lose. Because that's how they see themselves. And you might say, well, that's because it's a sexist part of the world. Deal with it. They have different values. It doesn't mean that they're human rights violators. And what my friend said in the, in the van was innocuous. And shame on you for bringing that against him instead of talking to him about it, as you should have talked to me. You don't shoot the messenger, especially when he's a peace-loving person. Another thing he was fired for, and this is the most ridiculous, he said, and I quote, she flirted with me, and he was talking about a pedestrian who he was trying to sign up to become a member of Greenpeace. I've had women flirt with me on the street. You, as a gay person, or a lesbian person, may or may not understand what I mean, but you can't, as I can't express what it means to be a woman, climb inside a heterosexual's body, unless you've been a heterosexual, and say that we didn't experience what we didn't experience. I may be a man, and another heterosexual may be a woman, but we have a bond that you don't have if you're not a heterosexual. We are part of a community that we communicate with a vernacular in. We understand one another. And my friend who's a heterosexual understood that he was being flirted with. He has a right to express that. It has no bearing on anything related to the job other than it fell into the context of how we sometimes talk about strokers, people who talk to us for a while because they like us, and then they walk away. I had it happen that same day with a young Muslim gentleman. And I mentioned that he's Muslim because he mentioned it to me. There's nothing wrong with that. And at the end of a very good discussion, wherein I got him to see the benefits of getting involved with Greenpeace and fighting for the environment now, he just sort of slapped me in the face by saying, I'm a Muslim and this doesn't matter because God's going to take care of it, dude, and you're not really looking at life the right way. And he went, walked away. We're allowed to express our intellectual observations about these things, our experiential observations about these things, or we should be. So my friend got fired because he asked a girl if she wanted a, hu a hug, and he has no record of doing anything remotely inappropriate at work in that area. 
He got fired because he said that a woman flirted with him. And he got fired because he said that women take too long when shopping. He wasn't angry, pounding his fists. He was making an off-the-cuff, half-serious comment that came from the experience of his life. And he lost his job. Shame on you, Greenpeace. How ridiculous you are. How unfair you are and how inhuman you are. And how wrong you are for listening to Shelby, Keller, Yellow Goller, Stephen Buckley, And there's another one who agrees with you on this, but I won't name her because she wasn't involved in these character assassinations. I have a friend who's a political science professor. I grew up with him. We taught in Korea together. He has a law degree, a history degree, and a political science degree. We've been talking about this failure failure of the left for many years now. And when I told him and his professorial colleagues about this story. They all agreed and they're all intelligent and they're all liberal minded and they're all academic and they're all well acquainted with America. They're in their 40s. They all said you were wrong, Greenpeace. And they all said that this is a fault in left-wing politics. We tear, as I said earlier, at one another. I don't, but you, Yellow Goller, do and you, Stephen Buckley, do and you, Shelby Keller, do and there's another one among you and you know who you are but again, I won't mention you to be fair because I am fair. You weren't involved in this although you were involved in the first event which put me on notice at Greenpeace. The very first time I got in trouble for being a sexist at Greenpeace I had been out in front of City Hall canvassing and for the third time that day a woman had pulled a man away from signing up with Greenpeace We have to make a quota. And I was frustrated because it was a cold day and it was a hard day. And mind you, I broke my ass paying expensive fees on the Long Island Railroad to work for Greenpeace. And I worked all through this winter in frigid winds and Arctic conditions, rain and snow for this to happen. Now, at City Hall... I came back to my spot after walking down the street with this man and almost signing him up, but having to concede him to the power of his girlfriend. And I said, damn, girls always do this. And this is what I had to meet with because I said that. Shelby Keller said to me, that's sexist, Mondo. And I said, it's not sexist. I'm making an observation of a paradigm in male-female relations in the heterosexual community. Something that she may not know about. She's gay. Or maybe she should know about it because she's human. Humans do this. Men and women do it to one another. It's not because the woman is a woman, but maybe it is in that particular relationship. But men and women sometimes exert power over one another in relationships. And we all know that women can do that and men can do it. And since I'm a heterosexual and I've only dated women, it's always been women that have done that with me. It's not wrong to make mention of that. It's not sexist. And I'm not exerting a powerful position of mine, like president or senator, over women in making a law. I was letting off steam. And it is absolutely clinically insane to call me to task for this. What you do is, with a fellow left-wing environmentalist, a human rights activist, is you put your arm around the guy, or even if you have to, you punch him in the arm and you say, hey, you're being stupid, don't say that. And then I would say, you're right, I'm sorry. But then she stood there and she said, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, in the middle of the street. And that counted as the first incident, as I was told when I was terminated. And the issues in Boston counted as the second. And so I lost my job. I could have brought her up on charges of verbal abuse. But you see, that's not within the doctrinaire politics of political correctness and feminism in America. So I lost my job at Greenpeace over hearsay, misunderstanding, and character assassination. I wasn't hurting anybody. The fact that this girl... And Buckley, who's a man, but I suppose he has gender issues, was offended by what I said about being involved with the wrong kind of women, which is really a statement about me, cost me my job because they are super sensitive. The other people at Greenpeace, Stephen Kendall, Kevin, Richard Duke, Terrence Brunson, 
and others who could tolerate these things with a grain of salt and understand that they have to listen to the person speaking and be compassionate and understanding and know that the person speaking is not an ethnophobe, is not a sexist, is not a man who is against women, is not a man who is against gays, would afford me the time to talk about it. But what these people did was they went behind my back and they made a case to get rid of me. And they lost a good activist, a good person, who every day on the street brought credit to Greenpeace by sending most people away with a smile on their face, whether they joined Greenpeace or not. Sent most people away, and they've told me this, more educated about the environmental crisis that we face. And what did they do? They cost me my health benefits. They cost me an embarrassing and degrading mark on my resume and something over which I will have to think about how to explain to future employers if I want to mention that I worked at Greenpeace. They've done irreparable damage, but they don't care. And I could tell by what they did when I tried to address them about this. Some of them defriended me on Facebook. It's not what I would do. I would address it because I'm a man of character. And this is what they need to do. They need to develop character. They need to develop compassion. They need to develop love if they want to be part of the left-wing environmental movement. Now, some of you may think I'm trying to hurt them by mentioning their names here. I want them to suffer because through suffering they will grow. I want them to have a conscience. I want them to understand that you can't do this to people just because you're young and immature. Somewhere along the way, you need to learn that you're going to scrape your knee if you're going to throw yourself at the ground. And by trying to hurt other people, you're doing nothing but throwing yourself at the ground. You threw me to the ground, and this is the price you pay. So, love, peace, joy, enlightenment, growth, and maturity to all of you. Yellow Goller, Stephen Buckley, Shelby Keller, and Kistel Gordon. I'll mention you now, because... You were unkind to me on Facebook, thinking that I was wrong. You said to me that I should realize my mistake. What mistake? Being a human being? Being surveilled by a nervous wreck with an agenda? Having a case made against me that can't stick because it isn't true? Not speaking within the confines of political correctness to make you happy? I'm an artist, I'm a writer, I'm a comic, I'm a poet, I'm an activist. I have a damned right to speak and say what the hell I want. And I didn't say anything wrong. Good luck.